Hello everybody, didn't even have my mic on. It's Friday, and welcome to the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Exciting things happening here at Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Get ready for tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is going to be brilliant as Jesper and Vic in the office bring you all the news that I didn't this week. Just make sure you've hit that subscribe button, make sure you've hit that notification button. I know a lot of you weren't served with yesterday's video because it was a little... Um, how shall we say, a little, um, well, it wasn't very family friendly. So if you did miss yesterday's video, if you didn't see it in your sub box or on your recommendation page or wherever you see my videos, then go and make sure you check out yesterday's video. There's a little card just up there to, uh, to go and do so. Please check it out. It was a good one. All right, so let's get into the show. And first up, what do you think to the, uh, to the new t-shirt? I think I, I mentioned yesterday that I was going to do a giveaway on it, but um, I walked into my office this morning bare chested and didn't have anything so I thought I'd just chuck it on. This is supposed to be a small as well and it's absolutely massive so yeah it's nice though isn't it? Right let's say a massive massive happy birthday to Sergio Higuita another prodigy out of the stable that is Colombia. Now according to Jesper this kid is going to be the next Egan Bernal so if you want to put some money on him for this year's Vuelta then do so. I don't even know if he's riding the Vuelta but according to Jesper he's going to win the Vuelta so you heard it here first. As long as you can do it responsibly and you can afford to lose the money then go and put some money on him. Next up Zwift news and a new course has just been revealed on Zwift. It's called, oh, what was it called again? Titans Grove, that was it. Check out this trailer. Here we are at the new Watopia route. It's called Titans Grove. I'm gonna sing over this song so we don't get copyrighted. Titans Grove, Watopia Preserve, that's what I just said. Massive trees, look at the trees, look at the eagle soaring high. It's pretty much just a copy and paste of the S's, just made a bit longer. Big trees, small trees, dead trees, oh it's a bear and a rock massive rock lots of water trees grass water that's about it right amongst giants run amongst giants titans grove all right so there you go titans grove what do you think have you ridden it if you have leave a comment down below i'd love to know what it's like i've not personally rode it yet um, i'm going to jump on zwift at some point and ride it but it just looks like a i'm not going to diss it listen i've dissed zwift I, I do it all the time because i think it's a new course, brilliant. And then it just it is just a it is just a ribbon of tarmac. I want something, I keep saying this, I want something more. But I don't know what it is out of Zwift. I want something more than just a ribbon of tarmac with lots of massive trees around it. I'll ride it, I'll see if it's fun. Um, I really didn't get on with Fuego Flats. Like literally rode it once and was like... <sighs> but the most interesting thing and I'm, I'm so excited about this and I want your comments. You've got to leave a comment. If you're watching this video, you have to leave a comment. Zwift want us, well, mainly you, they'll, they'll never pick a name that I suggest. They want us to name the Titans Grove Bear. So if you've ever watched one of my videos, if you're watching this right now, stop, pause it, hit that pause button, comment down below. I, want, I just want to name what you would call that bear, any name, all right, anything. Drop it down in the comments below. We'll read those suggestions out on Monday's show. All right, moving on to this next story. And listen, right, uh, we might need to start a petition about this because I, I want to be involved in this. According to Road CC, Bradley Wiggins has been commissioned a non-scripted entertainment series on Comedy Central. Right, I know what you're thinking. We need to be part of this, right? We need we, Somehow, we need to get me on that program. I don't know how, but we should. Now in this program, gods of the game, we will see contestants up against well-known British athletes in various sporting challenges. No one bloody found me. Why has no one asked me to be in it? Right, let's, 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 let's start a petition. Let's everybody tweet Comedy Central UK. The link's down in the description. In fact, it's just there, right? Go and tweet them saying, hey, let's get Pritchard on that show with Wiggins and then hashtag gods of the game. Let's do that. And then they'll, they'll get annoyed by the amount of suggestions about it. And then they'll be like, all right, let's take a look at his videos. Oh, bloody hell, he's mega. Let's have him. Go head over to Twitter if you're on Twitter and, and copy and paste the message that I've left down below and then just send it to him. All right, sticking with Twitter, moving on to this next story. Now, I don't know if this is a master troll 
or this was just some, some, I don't know, I don't know what it was. But a guy by the name of Bob Price tweeted this out a few days ago. Please sign my petition for the introduction of a cycle road tax. It's fair and will go towards paying for a reduction in the number of potholes found on our roads. Smiley face emoji. Below it is a link to the petition, and in that petition it says, Cyclists do not contribute a penny towards the cost of our roads. They get for free cycle lanes, secure storage posts, and are included in the highway code. Paying a small contribution towards the roads they use regularly is fair. I propose a £20 per annum cycle road tax and expect with more than 1.7 million daily cyclists that they will yield more than £20 million per annum. A road tax certificate can be held by the cyclists on their person if stopped by police. Penalties for not purchasing a cyclist road tax will need to be introduced into legislation. This will help reduce the number of potholes that we all suffer. The, the comments were golden, as you would expect. I think Bob's missing the point here that cyclists, as well as the rest of the UK, are all paying into this one massive pot called the government, which then distributes that taxation across various different needs. And one of those is road repairs, one of those is cycle lanes. And why are we building cycling lanes? Why are we trying to bring more infrastructure for cyclists? It's not for the cyclists per se that are on bikes now, it's to convince other people and make it safer for other people to then decide to leave their car behind and get on a bike and become a cyclist. So those people who aren't currently cyclists go, actually, that's more convenient, easier, and more beneficial to not only me, but also the environment and in doing so, switch from their car to their bike, which in turn makes them healthier, which in turn allows us to spend less money on the NHS because less people are getting ill because of obesity, because of diabetes, because of air pollution problems, and everyone's becoming a little bit healthier, so there's less money spent on the NHS. It's a political hot potato, this one, but ultimately, cyclists paying tax is the, is the what next? Pedestrians paying tax to walk down the road because there's a free pavement out of my house. I should have to pay for that. I do pay for it. What are we talking about? I do pay for it. Council tax pays for it. Bob, see, Bob, the problem Bob's got right now is he's, he's so hung up on this cycle lanes issue that cyclists are getting something for free. They're getting something for nothing and, and that's not right. They should pay for that. They do pay for it. Let's tackle it. Let's tackle another issue. Hot potato coming up. What about all those scrotes that decide not to work so they can claim benefits. I'm not saying they all do, but there are scrotes out there who claim benefits out of our money that we pay for so they can lounge around in their house and watch Jeremy Kyle. And Bob's complaining about people getting fit, using their bikes to get to work and commute. Come on, Bob. Priorities, man. Priorities. All right, guys, and let's talk about the two main stories of today. And the first one being the transcontinental race. A lot of people have been leaving comments down below about the race, been telling me to cover it. So here it is. For anybody that doesn't know what the transcontinental race is, let me explain it to you. According to the transcontinental website, the transcontinental race is the definitive self-support of bicycle race across Europe. At the sharp end, it is a beautifully hard bicycle race, simple in design, but complex in execution. Factors of self-reliance, logistics, navigation and judgment burden racers' minds as well as their physique. The strongest excel and redefine what we think possible while many experienced riders target only a finish. Hashtag be more Mike. So if you nip onto their website, as you can see here, we've got a, um, a map of the riders currently taking part. We zoom in here and have a look. So, so the race is from Bulgaria here and we've got time sections here or specific time sections that you have to hit. And then between those, you're literally doing your own thing. So you've got all these riders here. Let's have a look, see who's in the lead of this race. A lot of riders on this current time section here somewhere in the Alps. Yeah, the Alps. Wow, a couple have just finished. But the person in the lead is this one here. Sam Thomas, current speed. Well, pretty, pretty slow, but hey, but Sam Thomas is leading the, uh, the tra oh, hey, oh, sorry, I tell a lie. Look at these, look at these here. They're nearly out of bloody Switzerland. Let's have a zoom in here. Ben Dave is there. Blimey neck. Fiona Kolbinger. Fiona Kolbinger is leading 
the transcontinental race. Go on, lass. That is amazing. Oh, hang on. No, she's not. She's sat at side at River here, enjoying a little bit of R&R &R look. That's amazing. Fiona, go on, smash it. Take it to the men, take it to the women, and beat them. She's almost in France, the first person to reach France. Although, I don't know if she has to come down here and do this. That would be annoying. As the crow flies, bang, straight across. But she might potentially have to do this. So here's a, ra here's, here's a current race report. As Fiona Collinberg entered the CP3 parkour near the end of day five, she was holding a slim, <laughs> relative I guess, two hour advantage over second place Ben Davies. Could she defend it? Or would her challenge falter under the harsh, unyielding scrutiny of nearly 5,000 meters of vertical ascent? Oh my God. By the time Fiona pulled into control point three at 2.30 Central European time, she hadn't defended her lead. She had extended it, stretching that slim to our advantage to nearer four. If you wanna follow Fiona's journey as she, hopefully, that would be amazing. I would love to see that. If Fiona can beat the rest of the transcontinental racers and be the first into France, right at the other end, top north end of France, then make sure you head to the website, links down in the description. Go and somehow show them all some support. Go and show them some love because, oh my God, I don't, I don't get these, these, these ultra athletes, this ultra endurance thing that people do. Ultra endurance for me is anything over two hours. I, I, I just, I doff my cap to anybody that does race across America, any sort of sportive where they're pushing themselves way beyond what they feel they're capable of. And the transcontinental is crazy. And then a story we were gonna cover a couple of days ago is um, an ex-doper, I say ex, technically, he's probably still got that dope in his system and he's, he's still benefiting from it. And we know that because David Apollinio was banned from cycling after testing positive for EPO in an out of competition test. He served his four year ban and his first race back was Volta Portugal where guess what? Oh, he went and won. Fausto Copy tweeted, <laughs> quote quality tweet this. Fausto Copy tweeted this out. Greatest comeback since Justin Gatlin, Davide Apolinio, Amor and Vita just won stage one of Volta Portugal after sprinting like in his best days. Today was his second day of competition after a four year ban. Damn. That's really impressive. I don't know, I'm, I'm all for at least an eight year ban. And I know it's difficult because you, you are gonna have those anomalies where someone um, either eats something that's contaminated or takes something they shouldn't have taken um, out of competition like a, a Vicks inhaler or, or, a, or an asthma inhaler or whatever it might be and they, they could, you know, it has happened. I mean, it's happened in football, it's happened in skiing where someone's taken an over-the-counter medicine to try and get better, actually been tested positive for a, for a banned substance that was in that and subsequently they end up getting banned. And that's so unfair, but at the same time, you need to have some sort of punishment that, that doesn't allow a, a, a rider who's tested positive for, for EPO to be able to come back at all. It's unfair. Because not only did they cheat in the first instance, but then they've now raised the ceiling of what they're capable of for the rest of their life. That EPO is going to enhance their performance right until the point that they retire. And you need, to, you need to make the punishment so severe that it deters people from doing it. The doctors supplying these, um, uh, what's the word? R uh, regimes? I guess you could call it a regime. A, um, a a, a program, a dope program. See, the doctors giving the protocol for doping programs to, to be successful are obviously way ahead when it comes to the testers and they know exactly what they need to do to avoid tests, right? So people feel that they can dope because what's the worst that's gonna happen? Seriously, what's the worst that's gonna happen? They're gonna receive a four year ban. People will probably go, oh, that's that guy that doped. But ultimately, once their cycling career is over, they're gonna fade into in insignificance. People are not really gonna recognize them anymore as that cyclist, as that doper, and they're just gonna crack on with their lives. We need, we need to give these cyclists and these doctors who, who prescribe these kind of um, programs harsher punishments. That's, that's the only way you're gonna stop it. Think about it right. You get a four year ban right back at the start of your cycling career. That's not gonna put a team off signing you. No way. You're gonna serve your four years, you're gonna have 
um, a, a systematic doping system program. What? You serve four years, you come back when you're what, 22, 23? You've still got 10, 12, 15, potentially 20 years of cycling left in you. Not only that, but you've just raised your ceiling of what you're capable of because of said doping program. It happens at the end of your career. I was gonna retire anyway, so I don't care if I got caught doping. I've made my money. I was just trying to make a little bit more. I was trying to make hay while the sun shone, um, but I got caught, so I'll, I'll take it and I'll go and retire. Boo hoo. But anyway, my point being, those people that are bang to rights, the Lance Armstrongs, the, the, the Floyd Landises, the Ricardo Ricos, the Apollinios, these people should be facing severer bans to, to stop them in their tracks, to, to, to deter them from ever doing it. Leave me your comments down below. What do you think should happen? We can't castrate them, we can't hang them, we can't kill them, but we should, we should create something that will be a deterrent to them, something feasible. What would you do? Eight year ban, 12 year ban, lifetime ban? Chop the legs off so they can never cycle again? Leave your comments down below, let me know. All right, instead of the comments section today, we are guessing that gram. So I've only played this a couple of times, but I quite enjoy it, where I show you a picture from someone's Instagram story, and we simply guess who it is. You ready? All right, who's this here? Enjoying a bit of tranquility, a bit of quietness by the river, taking it all in. That's John Mould. And who's this here? Spaffing himself over a Campag tool set. Look at that. I mean, it does look nice, but who is it? That's the boss, T.O. Boss. And who's this growing um, magic mushrooms in their garden, claiming that they're new houses? That's Roman Sinkledom, FDJ rider. Who's this new buddy of mine? Started an indoor session at the right time. Unhappy emoji. Weather alert, flood warning. Imogen Cotter. And who's this weirdo hanging outside? And who's this weirdo hanging outside of Tesco's? Matt Stevens. All right, finally, who's this professional cyclist filming this RAF Chinook? As it looks, uh, well, it appears that it's carrying, I like to think that it's carrying cows from one field to another there, but I don't think it is. You got it, Adam Blythe. Sorry, my apologies, this is the last one. Who's this hanging out with this cool cat? Cool cat, get it? Cat, lion. Who is it? There's only one of them, so it has to be Egan Banal. Basic. What a boy. Hanging out in Starbucks with his new best mate. Thanks for watching, everybody. As I said earlier, if I made it into the edit, tomorrow's video is going to be Jesper and Victor bringing you the latest news that I didn't cover from this week. So make sure you hang around on Saturday and watch that. If you've not done already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that dislike button if you're not happy with what we're providing here. And do one. And don't forget, leave your comments down below. I want your opinion. Listen, yesterday's, yesterday's comments were just beyond amazing. I don't know why everyone was feeling a lot of love yesterday, but I really appreciate it. I'm going to respond to a few of those comments today, but I want your comments right now. Everybody that's watched this video to the end, leave your comments. I want names of that Zwift bear. What shall we call it? As ever, thanks for watching. Video tomorrow. I'll be back Monday.